So we've seen how to solve quadratic equations by graphing. We've seen how to do it by factoring. But factoring is just not going to work if you get a quadratic equation like this. Because you can't find two numbers that multiply to 3 and add to 6. So factoring is not going to work. And if you didn't have a graphing calculator, we need another method to solve this. So that method could be completing the square. And um, you should uh, this method before completing the square. So this is the one where we take we take the constant term and we're going to move it to the other side. So now it's a minus 3 over here. And this is where we say, okay, we're going to take half of 6, take one half of this, and square it. So that's, that's the part that enables us to complete the square. So half of 6 is 3, and when I square that, that makes 9. So I'm going to put a plus 9 here. So I've taken half of 6, 3 squared is, is 9. And because I've added 9 to the left side of the equation, I need to also add 9 to the right side of the equation, just to balance the equation. So what I have now is a perfect square trinomial, x squared plus 6x plus 9. This I know I can factor. Two numbers that multiply, whoops, sorry, two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 6 will be 3 and 3. And these numbers will always be the same once we've completed the square. It makes it a perfect square. So this just becomes, this would become x plus 3 and x plus 3 when we factor it, which of course is just x plus 3 squared. We've got two of those. And on the right side, negative 3 plus 9 is 6. So we've got a perfect square trinomial here. x plus 3 squared equals 6. And now I can isolate x by taking the square root. So if I take the square root of both sides, this would just give me x plus 3, because I've gotten rid of the squared, equals on the right side, remember every time we square root, we're going to need plus or minus. So we have plus or minus root 6. And then to isolate x, we just need to minus 3 from both sides. So our two solutions would be x equals negative 3 plus or minus root 6. So technically one is negative 3 plus the square root of 6, and the other one is negative 3 minus the square root of 6. And um, those would be our exact values. If we wanted to get a decimal approximation, we could do that. We just have to use a calculator. So negative 0 0.55, so x is now approximately equal to negative 0 0.55, or x is approximately uh, negative 3 minus the square root of 6 is negative 5.45, approximately. But it is best to leave your answers as exact values, unless the question specifically says give a dec two decimal or, uh, approximation to, to the question. Well, here's another one that, that we couldn't factor, but we could solve by completing the square. So we'll move the one to the other side constant term is going to come over here. Now it's negative 1. But this one has a number in front of x squared, so I'm, whoops, these were supposed to be x squareds. There we go. Um, now they're a quadratic equation. Um, so we need to factor out this number in front of x squared. So when you divide by negative 2, this is going to jump to plus 4x. Just double check this, negative 2 times x squared, negative 2x squared, negative 2 times 4x, negative 8x. So when we divide these by negative 2, this is what we get. Now we're ready to complete the square. So we need to take half of 4, which is 2, 
and square that, which is 4. And so it looks like I've just put a plus 4 to this side, but remember we have this minus 2 out in front. So everything in this bracket is needs to be multiplied by minus 2. So by putting the plus 4 here, I've actually put a minus 8 here because everything has got to be multiplied by minus 2. So just to keep things balanced here, I need to put a minus 8 on this side. So just, just keep in mind if there's a number in front here, whatever number we need to put here, we got to multiply by this. And that'll tell us what needs to go on the other side to keep things balanced. So now I can go about business as usual. Two numbers that multiply to 4 and add to 4 are 2 and 2. So this just becomes the perfect square x plus 2 x plus 2 squared equals negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. And now I can isolate my square. So I'll start by dividing by negative 2. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we'll leave that as 9 over 2. And now we can square root both sides. The square root of 9 is 3. I can't do the square root as two of 2, so I'll leave that as, as root 2. And of course, plus or minus every time we square root. And then we could minus 2 from both sides. Oops. And we would get this. And then just remember, it's, it's generally not acceptable to leave square roots in the denominator. So we will rationalize it by multiplying the top and bottom by root 2. And then we up top in the numerator, we'd have 3 times root 2, which is 3 root 2, divided by root 2 times root 2, which is root 4. And of course, the square root of 4 is 2, which gets rid of our square root. So this would be our, our final, final answer. And it would, be, it would be a little bit more difficult because you'd want to convert this to a decimal. But you could, and you should, especially on a, if you're doing a quiz or something, you should take your answer and put it into the original one and just make sure that when you go negative 2 times x squared minus 8 times your x value plus 1 that you do indeed get 0. Another one that we can't factor so we will use the completing the square method so we'll bring the 1 over to the other side by adding 1 to get this and now we need to factor out a 2 and so what's going to make this one a little bit trickier is it's introduced a fraction here because 3 doesn't divide by 2 so we still go about doing this the same way but it will be a little bit messier because of the fraction work so we would have to take half of 3 over 2 so we have 3 over 2 we got to divide that by 2 well, remember 2 is like 2 over 1 and if we're dividing by 2, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this becomes 3 times 1, which is 3, over 2 times 2, which is 4. So if I divide that by 2, I'm going to get 3 fourths. And now i got to square it. Well, that's going to be 3 squared 9, 4 squared 16. So I've got to put a 9 16 there to complete my square. And then to keep things balanced, I've got to remember that everything in this bracket's times 2. So if I times that by 2, I get 9 times 2 is 18 over 16. So that what's, that's what needs to go here is 18 sixteenths times 2. And now, as a perfect square, this would be 3 fourths. So 3 fourths times 3 fourths is 9 sixteenths. And 3 fourths plus 3 fourths is 6 fourths which is 3 over 2. So here's our perfect square trinomial. And now I've got to do some fraction work on this side. And so I've got to do 1 plus 18 sixteenths. Well, I'm going to reduce that fraction. 18 sixteenths is really 9. Divide by 2, that's 9. Divide by 2, that's 8. And remember, when we add fractions, we've got to have a common denominator. So 1 over 1 is like 8 over 8. So 8 over 8 plus 9 over 8 would be 17 over 8. So this is just good review from fraction work that we did in in grade 8. 
and now we need to isolate x squared, so we're going to divide by 2. So dividing by 2 here, that's gone. We've got to divide this by 2. So again, some more fraction work. So 17 eighths times 1 over 2, and we multiply by the reciprocal. So that becomes 17 over 16. So 17 16 is good. Now we can square root both sides. So when I square root 17, I have, we don't know what that is, we'll leave that as root 17. The square root of 16 is 4, and plus or minus on that. And finally, to isolate x, we would minus 3 fourths from both sides. So we'd have minus 3 fourths, and then the plus or minus root 17 over 4. And it's it's usual to, to leave the plus or minus part um, at the end. You could write it as plus or minus root 17 fourths and then then the minus 3 fourths when we bring that over, but it's conventional conventional to have this as your second part and and write this first. So we have the negative 3 fourths first and then plus or minus root root 17 over over 4. And then isn't that nice? They happen to have common denominators, so we could even just write it like this. So negative 3 plus or minus root 17 all over 4 would be our solution to um, this equation. So that's how we would use uh, completing the square method to solve quadratic equations.